We're here with the Unity Coding Tips tutorial series, and uh, we're going to be moving on now. We've uh, we've covered extensions, link, and a couple other fun stuff. So what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, apply this to a real-world situation. So I came across this Vectrosity library, and uh, this is uh, something uh, Eric 5H5 from the forum made, Star Scene Software. It's available in the Unity Asset Store. It's a great little package for uh, drawing lines. So it uh, it's basically like a incredibly souped up line render. So what we're going to do here is uh, I downloaded this package today and straight off uh, I wanted to start tinkering with it so uh, I wanted to there's a couple things it didn't have that I wanted it to have so this is a, a perfect example of where extensions come into play. So what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, throw something together with the stuff we've learned using extensions and link and we're going to extend this library to have a couple uh, neat new methods. Uh, the code that started this all was uh, was this graphing code I found here uh, that uh, Eric 5H5 posted. It's uh, real simple. It just uh, it creates a couple lines. So it creates two lines here, and then it takes some data points and plots them on a graph. So that's going to be our basic starting point. I, I changed this over to C Sharp and modified it quite a bit, but this is the basic idea of what we're going to be starting with. So just to see where we're at in the, in the scene here, you can see we have a graph real similar to what you just saw, and it's just got a line plotted. Uh, it has a couple couple new things in here that weren't on the forum. You could set the total number of points, for instance, and it'll, uh, it'll just create more points and uh, add a little more detail to the graph. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump right in and take a look at what we have in the code so far. Uh, a lot of this is just setup code, so it's it's not really all that important. Um, you can see in the start method, all we're doing is figuring out the spacing for our x-axis labels. Nothing all that important there. Uh, there's a method here, generate graph data, and all that does is uh, it just generates random points. You can see right here, all it does is uh, is loop through. Uh, we could set a length, and that was the length that you just saw. In the inspector, and uh, it real simply just uh, just fills us up with some vector twos, just so we have some test data that we could generate really quickly. And going further down, um, I mean, library is real simple. You create uh, an array of uh, of vector twos, and you create a vector line from it. And the vector line has uh, all kinds of options. Check out the library for. Uh, for more details, it's totally worth it. It's only fifteen dollars. Can't beat the price, and uh, it's, it's got a billion options. But uh, that's not really the point of this this tutorial. So we're not going to go too deep into vectorosity. But the general gist is, you create a vector line, and then you can call vector dot draw line, and it'll draw the line for you. And we do this again over here, and all this is doing is drawing those white axis lines, the y and the x axis lines that you saw. And we're just going to do a little math here to figure out the spacing. Nothing all that magical there. So the on GUI method here, it's just going to draw uh, the labels for the x and the y axis. So really not that much going on here. Just a, a standard GUI label. And it just loops through the total points and prints out numbers for you. Nothing magical. So here's an interesting one now. We're finally to one here that uh, actually is a little link here for you. So in order to figure out the spacing in the y direction, we need to know what the maximum y value is in our graph data. Because remember, we generated this randomly. So this is, a, this is a real simple link statement. And let's actually just uh, delete it. And we'll explain it as we go along. So graph line is a vector line. And again, this part isn't too important, too important. But points two is that array of vector twos that we had previously. So this is uh, this is basically just a, a whole bunch of vector twos and, and we just want to know what is the maximum value in here so that we can make our graph pretty. So we're going to use uh, the link extensions and they're all extension methods and uh, see there's a uh, whole bunch of them in here and max is obviously the one we want because we want to know the max point in there. So we can go ahead and here um, and what we're going to do is this is actually a different form of link than we saw before. Previously, we we were doing it uh, the longhand method where you you uh, write out almost SQL-like syntax. 
there's actually a shorthand version as well. And that's what we're going to use for this one. So there's two different versions here of Max. And we're going to go ahead and use this one. So you can see here it's func, which is essentially like a function pointer for those familiar with C and C++ and other languages that have them. And it takes in a vector 2. And in. so if we're going to go ahead and go like this, and this is, uh, this is our anonymous function, if you remember. And what we care about is the y value of the graph. So now that we have, we're in the body of the function essentially here. And what's what was of interest to us again is the y value. And you can see we get autocomplete after, you know, monodevelop takes a second to figure it out. But once it does, it gives you the proper autocomplete. Okay, so what this is going to go ahead and do is loop through all of the vector twos that we created. And it's going to find the max y, the vector with y value. So it's going to spit out an int, and that's going to be max y. So again, not that important, the rest of this. This is just uh, printing out our y-axis labels. So let's get to the interesting part. So what I wanted to be able to do is, let's take a look at this graph here. Given these points, I wanted to be able to take a new array of points and pass it in and have these points animate to the new points. So this is, has all kinds of, uh, of different applications. For instance, uh, you could have a, a vectorosity sphere, and maybe you want it to turn into a spiked ball. So you, you want to animate that. So you would want to take a, a couple of different uh, of your verts and just animate them outward from the sphere so that it looks like a spiked ball. And we're going to keep it real simple and just use vector twos for this one. And we're going to create a nice little animation function. And we are going to make an extension. So. Let's jump right in. So what we're doing this is uh, we're going to do this on the vector line class. So we're going to call it vector line extensions. And you can see there's a uh, four functions in here. Uh, basically, I want it to be able to animate, and I want it to be able to animate the colors. So these are all empty right now, except for uh, you know this one. Just uh, uh, there's two different versions here. One of them just takes in the end line points array and the duration, and it just calls into this animate method, which uh, has an extra parameter so you can uh, pass in an easing function and you can see we're using uh, we see this func again and this is uh, this is in the system dot link namespace so uh, this func right here is takes in a float and it returns a float so I have a little easing library that I use in uh, pretty much all my projects and it's real 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 simple it's just a whole bunch of static classes so we have linear easing, quartic, quintic, sinusoidal, elastic, all those goodies. And you can see each and every one of these functions here, it takes in a float and it returns a float. And that's true for every single function in here. They all take in a float and return a float. And what's happening behind, behind this, uh, closed doors here is uh, for linear, there's really absolutely nothing happening. It's just returning it directly. And as we go down, you get different things. Quartic here, so we have uh, ease in, ease out, and it's these are just um, all directly based on Robert Penner's easing equations. So you can uh, you can look those up, and if anybody wants this, just uh, let me know, and I could pass it along to you. But it's uh, really handy to have these for for any animations, because right out of the box, you get a whole pile of animations, and you can add your own easing functions to them as well. Okay, so let's start filling this in. So right now, it's just has uh, nothing in it. So what we want to do here is we want to take the the um, points that are already in the vector line, and we want to animate them each point to the end line points. So this is uh, it's going to be a little bit of code, but this is a real neat thing about this is once you learn how to animate something like this, there's nothing at all that you can't animate. So the first thing we're going to do is just we're going to actually uh, just do a little bit of validation to make sure that we're not passing in uh, anything, uh, you know, an end, end line points array that has the wrong number of points. So again, we're going to grab the points two. This is a vector two uh, array, and we're going to grab the length of it. That's the total length. So here's our sanity check. We want to make sure that this total length is equal to the end line points length. So we just want to make sure that we're passing in the right number of, uh, of uh, 
values in that array because if we have a, a misaligned array we're going to end up with no reference exceptions and all kinds of other fun stuff. So when we're doing animation we always need to know the start value because when we're when we're easing we need to know the start value and the end value and that's how we can apply the easing. So what we need to do is we need to copy the original array of values because uh, as we do the animation they're going to be changing so we won't be able to use them anymore once uh, once they start changing so we're going to need a copy so what we'll do is we'll make a our own little array here and again they're vector twos in this case and we have our total length so we know exactly how many we need so right there we have an empty array of vector twos so we want to copy the actual points to. This is the, the vector2 array out of there, so we have our start values. So we're just going to use a method in system.array. There's a copy method. And I'm going to take vector2 points2. To. So that's, that's going to be our source. Next up is our destination, and we just created that. So start line points is our destination, and the length, and we know the length because we grab the length right up here. So now we have a copy of the start points. So now we know our start points, we know our end points. So that's, that's pretty much half the battle right there. We, 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 have, uh, we have all the information we need to go ahead and, uh, and start this off. So let's, uh, I'm just going to paste this in here. So we need to keep record of the start time and we need to keep record of the end time. That way we only have to calculate it once. And uh, I just put this uh, ease position in here uh, is just a little helper variable so we don't have to keep creating floats on the stack and what we want to do is we want to loop through and we want to loop through in, in a while loop and as long as start time is less than or equal to end time we're gonna loop okay so we know we're in an I enumerator so we're doing this is gonna be running a coroutine so we're gonna want to do a yield return null at the end of this loop that way uh, we get a delay in here and the animation uh, actually is visible.